The picture you are about to witness is based on newspaper and court records. It is a true story. To protect the innocent, some of the names, places, and incidents have been changed. It all began in the fall of 1957. some excuse about having to get in early and come with us. No, thanks. Well, why not? Well, you know very well why not. In the first place, the Watkins expect me to come straight home. Oh, that. What are you, anyway? Their prisoner? I'm a guest in their home. Well, I guess I'm not even that. Oh, well, you know the situation. Well, sure, but does that give them the right to keep you from having a little fun once in a while? Well, yes, I think it does. Hi, Johnny. Wow, when you made that last touchdown... Never mind that. Where's Dixie Ann? Oh, Dixie Ann. Well, she had to stay home. Those foster parents of hers are a couple of cubes, and we have kittens if she stays out late. You know how it is. She said she was very sorry. Maybe some other time. You're lying. This whole year then now put me in the deep freeze again, didn't she? Now, give me the bottle. You did bring that, didn't you? Sure, Johnny. Watch it, somebody might see you. Now, let him. Tony, don't drink anymore. You still have to drive me home. Get rid of her, buddy. But Johnny, I said get rid of her. I got plans for us tonight, and she's not included. You know how it is. Here are the keys. I'll pick up the car tomorrow. I don't want to go home now. Get lost, baby. Are you going to let him talk to me like that? I said get lost. Okay. Okay, big man. What's up? Listen. How'd you like to help me teach Dixie a lesson tonight? I mean, a real lesson. Sure, Johnny. Sure. I know where we can get her and make her wish she was never born. Well, here we are. Thanks for the soda can. Thank you. Say, how about the movie Saturday night? Oh, I'll let you know tomorrow in school. Foster parents again? Mm-hmm. They think I'm too young to be dating. Well, what do they expect? You're almost 17. Oh, they mean well. They just think they're protecting me. Anyway, I just wish we could get to the point where I could walk you right up to your front door instead of leaving you at this old corner. They'll allow it when they're more sure of me. Good night, Ken. Good night, honey. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, it's you. Well, what do you want? Look, I told Bobby why I couldn't come with her. I have to get home. You kept a hot date with that punk Kent Fitzroy, didn't you? You're drunk. If you don't let me by, so help me, I'll scream. You hear her, Tony? Little Miss Dixie wants to get by. <laughs> I don't think she likes us very much. Okay. Let her go by. Pick up that stuff and get in the car.
When you're lucky enough to have real parents, you don't make bargains, and there are no refunds. You take it for granted that they'll open their door to your troubles with love and understanding. But with foster parents, it can be a different story. In Dixie Ann's case, they didn't bargain for trouble, and they didn't bargain for love and understanding, and they didn't open their door very wide. They just wanted a quick refund. But Cora, we have to go to the hospital. No, no, I don't want to have anything more to do with her. The first thing in the morning, I'm calling the supervisor and they can just put her in somebody else's home. Let them take the responsibility. The money they give us only half takes care of her anyhow. Close the door, Edgar. Close the door. I never want to see or hear about that creature again. Sorry, officer, but you see how it is. Yeah. Yeah, I sure do, mister. I sure do. Dixie, I know it's no comfort to you, but the two boys involved will be punished to the fullest extent, I promise. Miss Dennis, may I have the letter you received from the Watkins family? Yes, Your Honor. Here it is. Dixie Ann, your foster parents have requested that you be moved to another family. I've already checked that, Your Honor, and there's no other place available at this time. I'm very sorry to hear that. Under the circumstances, Dixie, I have only one alternative. You heard of the Holland Home for Girls? Yes. I want you to realize it's in no way a prison or a penal institution. I realize that. All right, then it's my decision that you be sent there until we can find a residence for you or until you're 18 years of age. Miss Voss, will you make the necessary arrangements? The Holland Home for Girls wasn't really a bad place to stay for two years, as far as those places go. It had nice grounds, good food, and modern facilities. In fact, it had everything but the one thing that could keep you from crying in your pillow every night, an understanding heart. The nearest thing to it were the alumni who'd been through the same mill themselves. In a nearby city, such a girl was Linda Dietrich, who had resolved to keep in touch with the home and help anyone else coming out into the world again. Is having this Dixie here going to follow up my life? Only that she may help me to cope with you. Very funny. Very funny. She's probably a homely little pigeon who'll never have any dates, and you'll want to stay home with her. Maybe. No matter what she's like, I'm going to do my best to take good care of her. I know how tough it was for me when I got out of that place. You know something, honey? You're a great gal. Flattery will get you nowhere. Now march. But what will I do? No date, no plans? You could find yourself a nice little bar and drown all your troubles. Good night, Miss Linda Dietrich. Good night, Mr. Timmons. The same time tomorrow? Of course. Where else could I find office to home transportation for just one little kiss? <laughs> Keep clean. How 
corny would it sound to say welcome home? It would sound just right. It said then. Well, come on, give me your coat, get rid of that bag, and let's unpack. <laughs> Now, why don't you just sit down and relax? I'll yak on about myself. It's my favorite topic. Oh, that's kind of cute. Um, first of all, every time I get mad, I wash out every pair of nylons I've got. So when the place is just dripping with nylon moss, don't think your roommate has gone flip. <laughs> How often do you get upset? Every time I have a battle with a certain big lug of a guy who thinks marriage is a dirty word. Is he trouble? No, that's why I get upset. He's never made a pass I can resent. Discouraging, isn't it? He sounds nice. Oh, he is. His name is Scott Timmons. We both work over at the same office, the Hildebrand Advertising Agency. I'm Mr. Hildebrand's girl Friday, and he's, well, number one agent in the office. I guess that's all about myself. What about you? You got a guy in your life? Uh-huh. Kent Fitzroy, he's a law student. Uh-huh. He's real nice. I've known him since grade school. Listen, I guess I better get it said so you'll know that I know. How did Kent take it? What happened? He was the only one to believe me. Even my foster parents thought I was partially to blame. They could have taken me back and kept me out of the hall and home, but... Say no more. I get the picture. Small people in a small town with big mouths. Well, you just forget all about that now. From now on, nothing but good things for you. Here, you can hang these up. <laughs> to a starving man, the good things are a scrap of bread. And to a girl like Dixie Ann, they were the everyday routine of just having a job and going to work. The fears were gone now, and so was the hurt. And there was a happy sense of belonging in the world. But yet, she still couldn't help but feel that she had been amputated somewhere. Hi, honey. Hey! Where's the fire? Scott's going to be here in a half an hour. I'm never going to be ready. Would you do me a favor, honey? Get that blue satin sheath out of the closet and put some water in the tub for me. I got to call Scott. Sure. You been writing Kent again? Uh-huh. I don't know how you do it. I could never sit home alone every night the way you do. I don't mind. Hi, Scott. It's me, honey. Listen, I just got home. The traffic was terrific. I'm going to be a little late. For my own wedding, why don't you try me? <laughs> Meet me at Leo's in about um, half an hour, huh? All righty. Honey, make that an hour, will you? I have a couple of things I have to do. OK. Like it? It's gorgeous. I never had a party dress like this. Well, you've got one now. And a party to wear it to. Come on, Cinderella. <laughs> what I call the package goods. Linda? No, 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 you idiot. The other one. 
Fixie Ann Dyke, this is Drake Porterfield. He's a mad photographer. Go on and dance with him, honey. It's harmless. Hi. Mr. Hildebrand, how do you do? I hope you don't mind Linda bringing me to your party. Oh, nonsense, my child. You're most welcome. Most welcome. As a matter of fact, you've made my evening complete. Now, that sounds more like sign on the dotted line charm than it does social grace. <laughs> Secrets and secretaries. Well, now, that's exactly what it is, Linda. Shall we go to my office? How would you like to be Miss America? Or at least make a try for it. Look, I can lay odds, Dixie, that I can guarantee you at least the title of Miss Colorado. <laughs> I... I don't understand. Nothing to understand. There's a lot of business connected with beauty pageants. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm preparing a new campaign for a cosmetic firm. Now... You have nothing to worry about. You'll be in good hands. We'll lead you all the way. All you have to do is simply give us certain advertising rights if you win. Uh, I don't know. I... Well, I never thought of myself in that way. Besides, I don't think I'd be able to parade around in a bathing suit like that. Isn't that silly? Why, you go to the lakes to swim, don't you? How can you be sure I'd be good? Well, it could be just an embarrassing waste of time. Dixie, he knows all about advertising. It's a legitimate offer. And if Leo can guarantee winning the finals, it's worth betting your $2 job. Do you think I should do it? Honey, if I looked like you, I'd be home basting a bikini right now. Well, Dixie, is it a deal? Okay. The dreams of over 50 million American girls are what go into making the big business of beauty. And as with any other product, it all starts with the build-up. The infinite planning, the training, the posing, the costumes, the angles, and the endless photographs are all aimed toward that one big day, the first elimination contest. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now about to approach the climax of this wonderful evening. The girls are now prepared to show themselves to the judges in bathing suits so they can be graded on their physical beauty and appearance. So now, ladies and gentlemen, here they are. And now as I call out their names, the young ladies will parade themselves for you and the judges. Number one, Miss Carolyn Stott. Number two, Miss Debbie Webster. And next, number three, Miss Dixie Ann Dykes. This is it. This is the big moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is Number three, Miss Dixie Ann Dykes.
Would your majesty do me the honor of finishing up her makeup before the coachman arrives? I'll be ready. I'll get it, honey. Wouldn't it be funny if it was Scott and he were going to tell us it was late? Hello? Yes, just a minute, please. It's for you, honey, long distance. It's Kent. Thanks. Hi, Kent? Oh, isn't it wonderful? I never dreamed that I... Well, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, thousands of girls want to be Miss America. I don't care what they think at home. They're just a bunch of narrow-minded, ignorant people. They proved that two years ago. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, Kent. I'd expect a different attitude from you. A little understanding. Just because I won a beauty contest is no reason for anybody to think that it gives me an appearance of evil. No, I won't quit. I won't quit the contest, not for you or, or any of those evil-minded brutes. <laughs> Honey, forget him. Oh, it was all right when you sat home writing him letters, but the minute you go out, you do something on your own. Down comes the boom. Honey, he's not worth it. No man is. Look around you. There's a lot bigger fish in the sea. I'll show it. I'll show everybody in that rotten town. At a girl, honey. Look at me. Now, stop that crying before that mascara gets all over your face. And remember, you're going to be the next Miss America. Everyone knows me. Oh, Dixie, how do you like the table? It's wonderful, your thanks. Dixie, here's a little token of our esteem, my dear. It's just a little gift to help you remember the occasion. Leo, you shouldn't do things like that. Oh, nonsense. Of course I should. Now go on. Open it. All right. Leo, it's beautiful. I don't know what to say. There's an inscription, Dixie. Read it. To Dixie Ann Dykes, the future Miss America, who will always be Miss Wonderful. Uh oh, I knew it. One picture, Miss Dykes. Of course. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, will you excuse me, my dear? I see a rather repulsive friend of mine I simply must insult. I'll be back in a moment. All right. That's the last we'll see of him, honey. It's table hopping time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention. We have the pleasure of having in our audience this evening a very lovely young lady. A girl you all must have read about. A young lady who just last night won the Beauty Queen contest. Miss Dixie Ann Dykes. <laughs> Dixie Ann. Won't you please come up so the folks can see you better? Come on. Wow, she's even more beautiful close to than she is far off. I have a new song that has never been done anywhere. And I'd like to dedicate it to this gorgeous young lady here. As a tribute to her beauty and her charm. 
Gentlemen, if you, if you please. Don't ever change. I love you as you are. Don't ever change. I'll take you as you are, lovely as always, more than I deserve, precious and so warm to me. That's what you are. Don't ever change. Don't ever let me go. Without your love, my world would die, I know. No. Don't let me go. your breath after that celebrity bit. Excuse me. I hope you won't think I'm too bold, but I spent the last few minutes trying to figure out several clever ways to meet you. That seems most direct and honorable. My name's Chuck Logan. What's yours? Dixie Ann Dykes. Well, not your stage name, your real name. Well, that's it. It's the way I was christened. But if you don't like it, I'll have it changed. Oh, no, no, no. I like it. I like it. Dixie takes me back to the old homestead. Moonlight and honeysuckle. Banjos are strumming. Look, do you mind if I sit down? Thanks. Forceful, aren't you? Oh, I think you should be made aware, Miss Dixie Dykes, that I'm the type of man who knows what he wants and usually gets it. Will you look at what our Dixie girl has found for herself? Eyes front, lady. You're with me. Oh, a girl can look, can't she? Well, you seem to have quite an opinion of yourself along with that nerve of yours. Oh, you'll learn to share that opinion someday, mark my word. Now for a simple question. Why are you sitting here all alone? Well, that is the penalty for dating a table hopper. <laughs> well, are you going to continue to sit here and waste away whilst the world is happy and gay? 
Is that a roundabout way of asking me to dance? I knew it. You're bright as well as beautiful. As a matter of fact, yes. Shall we? Why not? and go to sleep. Stop what? The big dream. What do you mean? Oh, don't kid me. You know what I mean. You've been on cloud nine since you've been getting all this publicity lately. I wasn't even thinking about that. Linda. Hmm. I just wanted to tell you you were right. Right about what? About Kent. There are lots of bigger fish in the sea. Oh, you mean Chuck? Mm-hmm. He must have a wonderful job. He sure must. He certainly knows how to spend money. He certainly knows how to dance. Did you see how he held my chair for me? He has terrific manners. Guess what? I've got a date with him for tomorrow night. What do you think I ought to wear? Linda? Greatest thing that ever happened to me. This is the most wonderful week of my life. I wish it would never end. It doesn't have to. Look, look, honey. I know this is fast, but why don't we get married right now tonight? Tonight? We can't do that. Oh, I know. I'll have to forget the wedding veil and all those things, but we'll find it just in the pace. Unless you was a license, we'll be married like that. To a while. Why is it we haven't any family to worry about? We make our own decisions. There's too many problems. 
What kind of problems? Well, who won the contest? Only single girls are eligible, and it wouldn't be fair to let down all those people have helped me. How would anybody know? We get married tonight, we stay at my place. Tomorrow you go back to Linda's, and we date every night. What have we been doing until the contest's over? Please. Well, Chuck, that would be wonderful, but we'd be lying. We don't have to tell anybody, do we? Honey, this is the answer. I get you, you get me. Nobody gets hurt. What do you say? Fritz, I got to stop at a liquor store. What for? Champagne, honey. Wedding champagne. Anyway, I've got to cash a check. Well, I have some money. Uh-uh. No, sir. In this family, I furnish the money. <laughs> Well, what kind of champagne do you like? <laughs> I wouldn't know one kind from another. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. All right. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? You know what this is. Yes, sir. Now, look, don't try to be a hero. No quick moves. Just do what you're told, or you won't get hurt. Yes, sir. Get a bag. The bills from the register. How the box? What box? Oh, the box you guys keep under the counter, the big money. There isn't any box. There isn't any box, huh? I want to take a look for myself. You better be right. All right, all right. All right, now go get me a bottle of champagne. None of that domestic stuff the best. Champagne? You heard me. Now move. Now look, you better not make a move until I get out that door. Or you're gone, you hear me? You must be crazy to think you could get away with this. The cops in this town... What'd you say? I didn't say anything. Now, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Honey, for you, nothing but the best. for the champagne. I never dreamed it would be like this. Well, everything is so expensive. <laughs> I've got some big investments going for me. Well, I guess so. Do you know we've known each other for a whole week and I don't even know what you do for a living? I knew it. You knew what? You married me for my money. Oh, you silly. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Chuck? Honey? Chuck? Sweating you out. Had more important business. Oh, yeah? Not to be more important in this job. Never mind. How's it look? Good. I case the whole layout. This cop, this Western guy, he's real pick up brand. Follows the same routine every day. I put the hand on him. He's going to this car in the driveway. 5.45 every night. On the nose. About the cabin. All set. Fishing shack's way out about 12 miles. Not too far. Not too close. Good. How about wheels? Got it. Real beat up heat. Not much to look at, but it'll run. Okay. Pick me up in front of my house tonight. What time? Takes about half hour to get the cops place. Okay. Make it five. Then we go like we set it up. We take him tonight. That's right. We take him tonight. I don't want any mistakes. Don't worry, Chuck. No mistakes. Okay. I'll see you. Hey, this guy's plenty. Yeah, who else would think of snatching a cop with a rich wife? Music for Saturday morning continues. Next, Andre Girard and the orchestra play Blue String. Well, hello. I seem to remember the face. Hi. Aren't you the girl that used to spend the night here? This is the most beautiful Saturday morning I've ever seen. It's a fine 11 o'clock this beautiful Saturday morning, if that's what you mean. Is it that late? It is. And may I say, I didn't get much sleep last night either. I'm sorry, Linda. I, I didn't mean to worry you like that. Oh, well. You want some coffee? Mm-hmm. Linda, hmm. what would happen if I dropped out of the contest? Drop out? For what reason? No reason. Just suppose I did. Well, a lot would happen. I mean, first of all, you'd be letting down all those people who've worked so hard to help you. You'd be going back on your word for another reason. It would be disastrous all the way around, that's all. That's what I was afraid of. Look, honey, I know it's none of my business. You're a big girl, you've got a life of your own to lead. But do you mind a little bit of friendly advice? Of course not. Just you be careful. There are a lot of people in this world who aren't exactly what they seem to be. Are they? Mm -hmm. I don't know any. With the result that Congress now has a big job ahead of it during this 1958 session, a bigger job than usual. In Denver, finals of the Miss Colorado J.C. Beauty Contest were held tonight at the Coliseum. And Miss Dixie Ann Dykes, 19-year-old brunette, won the coveted title. A banquet in Miss Dykes' honor is scheduled for next week. There have been no new developments in the Westerman kidnapping case. 
Alfred Westerman, the police officer whose wife recently inherited a fortune, was kidnapped, as you know. Ransom demands in the amount of $25,000 have been received by Mrs. Westerman, but it is not known whether the ransom will be paid. Police of three counties are working on the case, and it is thought that Officer Westerman probably is being held captive in some remote location near the Colorado-Wyoming border, north of Fort Collins. How do you like that, that dumb fuzz? They're only about 200 miles off. You know, Chuck was right. They'll never think to look for us out here in a fishing shack only 12 miles from the cop's house. Well, that ought to keep them quiet for a while. Hey, where's beating him up going to get us? You should be thinking about the money. If there's going to be a pickup. There is going to be a pickup. The wife's leaving the money in small bills under a platform in a park outside of town. Nine o'clock's the deadline. We're not going to pick the money up until four in the morning just to make sure nobody's hanging around. No fuzz staked out. Then we're going to get it and blow fast. Twenty-five big ones. Twenty-five thousand. Boy, I can't wait. I'll take it easy. we got nothing but time. I'm in no hurry. Anyway, I'm going to give him a treatment before I go. Hey, one more treatment and he's had it. Now, shut up. It's the last time I ever get tied up in a nut. What did you say? You shouldn't talk like that, pal. You shouldn't say things like that to me. I didn't mean anything, Chuck. Honest. Chuck, don't do it. Chuck, you'll louse up the whole cave, but we need him, Chuck. That's right. I don't want to foul up the deal. <laughs> Anyway, I got a little wife to worry about now. <laughs> Built into the wall of this case, Mrs. Westerman, is a transistorized ultra-high-frequency radio signal generator. This way we can triangulate a position to lead us to your husband. But uh, the use of this is entirely up to you. I don't know what to do. Is it dangerous? Is it possible they could detect it? Oh, it's extremely unlikely. They would have to have equipment that isn't available to the average person. Uh, I... Mrs. Westerman, when they get the money, your husband's chances are pretty slim. We must have a way to follow without detection. All right. We'll put the money in that case. I think you made a very wise decision, Mrs. Westerman. Now, remember, you have nothing to do but leave that case under the platform according to the instructions you got in the note. Now, when you've done that, get back in your car and leave immediately. We'll take over from there. And don't worry, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> This is Unit 5. We've got a fix now. Signal loud and clear, over. Uh, this is Unit 7 eight. Fix is OK, over. This is uh, Unit 1 nine. Fix OK, over. Well, all we got to do is wait now. Well, gents, it's after 3. I got to move. We 
Guido? Yeah. We're not back in an hour. Get rid of that cop. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, Chuck. Anything you say. Let's go. Oh, Bernie. You keep your mouth shut and do what you're told or I'll cut your liver out. Okay, Chuck. <laughs> Tracking is point one five seven eight report over. Seven eight to unit five. Now tracking two eight over. Unit one nine to unit five. Tracking two one here over. It looks like highway three two four heading toward Teal Lake. Use plan two. 10 4. Got it? It's in there? Did I get it? Boy, look at that. Hey, look at that dog. Get the bag, start the car. We gotta get out of here. I'll take care of that cop. What do you mean you'll take care of him? We're gonna leave him here, ain't we? Somebody will find him. Are you kidding? Hey, look, that wasn't the deal. We don't need to figure anything like that. Look, you let me do the figuring, Bernie boy. No cop's gonna figure us. Tell you what we'll do, Chuck. Let's take him along for insurance. We may run into trouble on the road. We can dump him later. Yeah. You mean like a hostage? A what? You know, Guido, you may be right. Yeah, let's go. It must be this cabin. You take the light on around there. We'll signal you when to turn it on. Why don't you go cover him? And you, get behind number five. Can you see, Jerry? Yeah, they're all set. Okay, let's go. Wait a minute.
He may be talking through his hat, but everything else in his story checks out. The clerk at the liquor store identifies his picture as the man who held him up that night. What if the rest of his story's true? Suppose she really is married to him. Oh, Mr. Parker, you must be mistaken. Dixie? Dixie, would you please come here a moment? All right, Leo. Excuse me, Drake. Dixie, this is Mr. Parker of the Associated Press. Hello. He has a few uh, questions he'd like to ask you. I'd be delighted. Sit down, my dear. Thank you. Do you know a man named Chuck Logan? Well, yes. Do you know anything about him, about where he comes from? Very little. I only met him a couple of weeks ago. Well, Miss Dykes, Mr. Logan is an escaped convict. He's just been recaptured. Oh. It couldn't be. And he also says that you and he are married. Oh, Jack! Jack! <laughs> Didn't she at least leave a clue as where she might be found? I told you, I don't know. I got up this morning and the girl was gone. This note saying, I'm sorry I let you all down and disgraced everybody. I'm going away. Please don't try to find me. Leo, I'm, I'm very worried. you just got to help me find her, Leo. Now, don't worry, my pet. I promise you. We'll find her. Hurt bad. Somebody call an ambulance. Okay. Let her go by. All right, then it's my decision that you be sent there until we can find a residence for you or until you're 18 years of age. And he also says that you and he are married. But... Mrs. Weisberg, don't you remember me? I'm Dixie Ann. Who? Oh, it's you. Where you been all this time? What do you mean by running out on me and sticking me with your rent and board? Well, I had an accident. I've been in the hospital. Yeah? Well, I held the room for two weeks, so you owe me $40. You got it? 
Well, I don't have it right now, but I will have it as soon as I can get another job. Yeah. Fat chance of that. Don't you know that every joint in town is closed down? All I want to know is, can I have my old room back and owe you till I can find some work? Sure. After you pay me the $40. I just told you I don't have it. Well, get it then. You know, it shouldn't be hard for a girl like you to earn that much in, say, uh, two hours.
May I help you? No, I... I wanted to talk to him. Mr. Field? Yes? Give me the money. Now, don't scream. Please don't scream. I don't want to hurt either of you. What is this? Just give it to me, please. All right. All right. But be careful with that thing. All right, you. Put those things back in my purse. Hurry! I said, hurry! What's back there? That, that, that's a storeroom. We store stuff there. All right, both of you move. I said, move! Radio's off at 10, and no parties in the room at night. If you know what I mean. I know what you mean. May I have my key now, please? Uh. Night, night, dearie. See handbags? Yes. Please. You better come with us. Summing up, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the prosecution again draws your attention to some salient and significant facts in this case. First, I remind you that the defendant, Dixie Ann Dykes, by her own admission and the corroborating evidence of witnesses, did deliberately premeditate and execute a crime against this state, an act of grand larceny, to wit, armed robbery with a deadly weapon. Second, I draw your attention to the curious fact that defense counsel in this case has offered absolutely no evidence of possible innocence, nor any hint that there might be extenuating circumstances surrounding this defendant's criminal behavior. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the plain fact of the matter is there are no extenuating circumstances. This defendant, Dixie Ann Dykes, has kept an ignoble life by a deliberate act of violence and theft. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in all conscience, you can return only one possible verdict. Guilty of armed robbery with a recommendation. A recommendation of maximum punishment. Ten years in prison. That concludes the case for the prosecution, Your Honor. Is the counsel for the defense ready with its summation? We are, Your Honor. You may proceed.
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I strongly suspect that as of this moment, all of you are deeply impressed by the evidence presented by the prosecution. It may be though that some of you are secretly hoping that I as counsel for the defense will at this 11th hour produce some sort of dramatic miracle that will instantly absolve Dixie Ann Dykes of all guilt. Regretfully, I must disappoint you. I have no such tricks. Instead, I shall simply tell the truth. The truth about Dixie Ann Dykes and what has happened to her in the past few years. A girl whom you are now asked to find guilty or not guilty of a serious crime, armed robbery, which carries with it a possible sentence of 10 years in the penitentiary. We admit to this charge. Indeed, we offer no defense except the greatest and noblest defense of all, complete innocence of intent. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that when Dixie Ann Dykes entered that drugstore with a lethal weapon, she was not motivated by avarice or greed. She was not after money for money's sake. She was simply and quite understandably fighting for sheer survival in a world that had abused, defiled, persecuted, misjudged, and exploited her for its own selfish purposes. I say to you that the person who sold her that dangerous weapon, the gun, is just as guilty, if not more so than... Now, just a minute! Excuse that man. Have him ejected from this court immediately. No, no, Your Honor. I have something to say on this case, something very important. Who are you? My name is Sid Kaplow. I sold the girl the gun. Your Honor, if the court please, I ask permission to depart from usual procedure at this time. May I confer with this man? Your request is highly unusual, Counselor. However, if the prosecution has no objection... We have no objection, Your Honor, but stipulate the right to cross-examine in the event the defense places this man on the stand. Your Honor, I would like to examine this man. Call Mr. Kaplow to the stand. Mr. Sid Kaplow to the stand. All right, Mr. Kaplow. You've established that you traded this gun to Miss Dykes, the defendant, for a compact. That's right. Would you explain the significance of this transaction to the court? May I see the gun? Oh, yes, of course. Now, let me show you something. I'm going to put a live bullet in the clip. Now, it is loaded, isn't it? Yes, so be careful. Why? See? Nothing. This gun hasn't any firing bin. Never did have. Your Honor, I move for immediate dismissal or mistrial. This is no lethal weapon. Dixie Ann Dykes could not possibly be guilty as charged. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Hang on to your hat. A bombshell just hit the Dykes case. The hold-up gun didn't have a firing pin. Well, sure, I'm sure. Now, take this down. Okay. The pawnbroker who sold Dixie Ann Dykes the gun Dixie stood up. The gun. Wearing a plain on, blue head dress. Black, black high-heeled shoes. That's right. Yeah. Her hair now was combed down and fell loosely to her shoulders. Now, now play up the oh, hearts and flowers. The greatest thing I ever yeah. witnessed in a courtroom. Well, you realize what this means? Well, well, she was facing body. a mandatory 10-year sentence, yeah. and now the worst she can get is only 10 months. Yeah, I'll play up the beauty. Somebody up there must like her. Dixie, I was asked to give this to you.
Are you ready? I'm ready. October 17, 1960, Dixie Ann Dykes was released from the Colorado Women's Prison after having served the term prescribed by law. Today, and still not quite 21 years old, she is once more starting life anew. We can only hope that the cruel chain of circumstances that her luckless environment had woven around her has at last been broken.